Hey everybody, happy 2024. I think I say that just so I uh, know when I recorded this <laughs> in the future. Hi, my name is Nelson Everhart. I was the composer for a video game called Vex by Acclaim Entertainment. And I like going back and revisiting tracks that I wrote back in the day especially from this game as it was a favorite of mine a lot of fun to write and i think largely held up here so the summit of the sages was in the mountain world and it was three heads that were kind of carved into the side of the mountain like mount rushmore and you could go into each one of them and there were challenges inside and wraith hearts to be gotten so the Summit of the Sages was in Mountain World, but this was the Waterhead. So you may have heard me mention that Vex was divided up into Forest World and Mountain World and Water World and Desert World and Ice World. And I selected an, an instrument to be featured in each one of those worlds. In the Water World, it was the cello. Now, Claim actually gave me a budget to record uh, a soloist for each one of these so I didn't have to simulate it with samples and was lucky enough to get some excellent players to come in and record player came in his name was Norman Johns fantastic cellist and in the intervening years I have lost those live tracks I'm not sure what happened to them I wasn't the best archivist back in the day <laughs> Didn't didn't really appreciate, you know, that I might want to come back to this music later and no idea where the the audio went. It's just missing. So I have remixed this to update some of the sounds, all of the things that made it sound like this track are still in there. And what I kind of rediscovered was this track that's really got a nice kind of ambient exploratory it's kind of epic in some parts there's a lot of tension so what i'll do now is i'll play you can follow along with my pro tool session right here and then i'll come back and we can dissect this a little bit all right so this is originally from the mountain uh, world called waterhead Let the Triton run out. So first of all, if we look at all the tracks, I had some female chorus. For some reason I had this audio, but I couldn't find the, the live cello audio. When I originally thought about revisiting the soundtrack, this wasn't available yet. So that's how long it takes me to get out new videos. Um, so I purchased the Triton rack, which is still sitting in my studio rack right in front of me. 
sort of a cheeky little monkey in that it's got some kind of power gremlin in it where it will sort of randomly turn off and then turn on again. But now that I have this software, this track is called an ARP Session Kit. It's ARP means arpeggiator, and the Korg had some drum kits that had arpeggiators on them with drum patterns. But this patch is that. Now, I didn't like that then, and I don't like it uh, as much now. It just wasn't right, right for this vibe. But I did like the kit a lot. It's got that huge delay after it. And at the time, I did a lot of sort of mixing of percussion. This is some more of the kind of electronic. So the little chirps and stuff. Um, again, I bought a DM Pro, uh, the actual hardware box, and at least this doesn't have like a software version of any of their old drum machines that I'm aware of. At least it's if you're listening. Come on, man, take my money. Here's the MIDI for that. This was the original MIDI that I played back in in the day. And this is a kit on the DM Pro called Danger Bass. I had two tracks of that. And this track is obviously this big kind of oil tanky sound and stuff. And I liked that playing at the same time as other stuff, but I wanted it on two different tracks just so I could EQ them separately. I obviously love goofing around because, you know, Vex is exploring and I was exploring around the keyboard. It just kind of felt right. So these three tracks were from an amazingly inspiring library called Distorted Reality by Spectrosonics. You can still get this in a modern format in a package called Stylus RMX Expanded. It actually has these libraries built into it. This first sound is called Ethereality, a really nice, just wide open, evolving pad. nice and evocative this other guy's called shaky jake i could basically just play one of these notes and just listen to this thing decay into the future forever so it's that really edgy grungy distant muffled sound yearning into the darkness and then the sound cleansing is kind of part of the little bridge section over here uh in my writing as a younger lad i used to use sounds that you know you hit one key and it has playing a fourth or a fifth or some other interval you're forced to do what's called parallel harmony you know if i hit a c and we're playing in fourths it's going to be c and f but then if I hit the F, it's going to be playing an F and a B flat, which isn't in the key of C. So you're going to find these chords that you, you might not find trying to play chords on your own. So this idea was kind of popular in the 80s with a, um, I listened to a, a group called 808 State. They use a lot of like sampled chords and, you know, re-triggered them on different notes. So you'd get this kind of parallel harmony and get something a little bit un unexpected, just something that kind of twisted your ear a little bit. So those are our three pad-like instruments there because I was trying to bring orchestral elements into here. Uh, I did use these tremolo strings. Tremolo is a technique where you're shaking the bow back and forth on the string. A lot of tension in there. Another patch in here is a sound from the Roland JV2080 called Twin Strats. Uh, I recorded the audio for this guy. Not being a guitar player growing up, I really liked it when I could find a good keyboard guitar patch. That let me kind of sound like a guitar. <laughs> Uh, and I really like that patch, just how nice and twangy it is. This is from the World card on the 2080, called the Gamelon. So there's the, the uh, MIDI that generated this audio. It's really, I think, I think uh, Vex kind of connected with myself and with a lot of people because it was so exploratory. Like there's a lot of territory to run around and explore. I felt like I was exploring musically with this. So I was really, you know, messing around with 
some new sounds and seeing where they led me. And a lot of the tracks sort of started off like this. I mentioned Spectrosonics. I would quite often start with a loop from Liquid Grooves or their other library, Burning Grooves. Both of those are on Stylus RMX. So there was really a sense of adventure, I think, in a lot of the writing of this as well. Another popular element of techno at the time, uh, especially in like a jungle or dub vibe, was the sub basses. This is the software version of the JV1080. This is the sound that I was using called high ring bass. I really like some of the bass sounds on the 2080 a lot. If you play that down super low. So apparently my uh, Roland subscription ran out. I hate renting sounds. In fact, the 2080 had a, a lot of bass sounds that I liked for synth stuff. And then I'm on record saying that the JV2080 orchestral harp is not my favorite realistic harp, but definitely has a, a very kind of evocative sound. This is a new cello. This is to take the place of the great Norman John's part. Uh, it's definitely substandard to his amazing playing, but it's not bad. So the Summit of the Sages was in Mountain World, but this was the Waterhead. So um, that might have slipped through the cracks. There were a couple tunes that I forgot to have some of the soloists play on because it was, you know, it was referencing another, a different world than it was recorded in. Okay, so that might be why the cello audio uh, wasn't there because it might not have been recording. Still like that JV2080 gong, uh, but I do have new gong that I layered it with. Get a little more splashy going on with it. I have new cymbal crashes and stuff and a new big just ginormous bass hit here because there was a couple places that really called for it to be nice and huge. That guy's from Cineperk, uh, Monster Low Hits. These are the new sounds that I've put in to replace or augment some of the sounds that were already there. These are the uh, tremolo strings, there's my gongs, there's the cymbals, there's the cello, uh, solo, big monster hits, and there's this new soprano sound. So going back to the top for a second, this is the original audio that I record. I actually remember to record some of the audio, proving I do sometimes think forward. And if I'm not mistaken, that was from, I had a PC that sat next to my Mac and it, it was running Giga Studio, which is just, their sounds in it so i would send midi to the pc and then grab the audio coming back out of it so it's probably less a case of me having foresight and more a case of i needed to get this into my mac so we could actually hear it so that doesn't sound bad by itself but it's it's the library i think it was voices of the apocalypse the women's choir uh, or the angels i can't remember just to my current ears didn't really pop hard enough so i added a lead line to that to reinforce the melody. So that's really quiet. I'm, I was just, just trying to blend it in there and pull that melody out a little bit. It's weird seeing uh, MIDI data that I my fingers generated when I was like 25. <laughs> That's like half a lifetime ago. So this is a voicing that I like using a lot. Um, we've got the D in the bass. And then this note is an A. And then up here, I'm actually playing the minor third. So you're actually getting the full chord plus some with that kind of fifth in there. And just three notes and we've got this like super rich kind of sound it's actually more like a d minor nine i think when you when you add the fifths of all of those notes in there when you learn about synthesizers or something called the adsr envelope envelope just is describing the shape of the sound how long the attack takes adsr stands for attack decay sustain and release so 
the attack is how long it takes to ramp up. This attack is forever, right? That's why I'm holding down these notes for a long time before we actually get to hear them, right? I'm gonna press the A now. Oh, and there it is, right? So it takes, takes a second or two to kick in. So the whole thing up to here has all been just exploring around in D minor and B flat. So there's a D minor and there's that B flat and back to the D minor. So it's really just been doing that all the way up here. The, the harp comes in and we hear the chill. Then when we step outside uh, with this cleansing sound. So that's really a B minor seven chord, B, D, F sharp, and A. And then if we kind of extrapolate from there, uh, where the actual chord, whatever note you're going to hit, is a minor third down from there, and then it's the minor seven version of that chord. Then when we go down to B flat, a minor third underneath that is the G, so it would be a G minor seven. All right, let's hit. There we go, and that sounds accurate. So if we're in D minor, we wouldn't be expecting to play a lot of B naturals, right? Because that's the major six. So we use the B flat there instead of the B major. So going from you know this dark key to is a very uh, very strong shift of tonality. But then when we come back to that G minor chord, that's actually the chord built on the fourth degree of a D minor, and that's a normal chord you would expect to hear in D minor. Right. So that's an example of how sometimes if you're using a sample that has an interval in it or it's a sampled chord, you can place around with some of the harmony and get some unexpected results. That sound pretty good. I, I like how we kind of deviate. We spent so much time in D minor over here. I like kind of getting away from that for a little bit before we come right back to D back here. <laughs> kind of a weird psycho circus section here we're back in d minor and it's sort of a little kind of waltz pattern but we're still in four do 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 but then it goes to this uh weird chord here which is an e sharp five and then when it goes down kind of to the five we're hitting that b flat which is a flat five so that is a weird cluster chord and it just sounds kind of kind of neat Then I transpose that same feel up to A minor here uh, for the ending. And then come back in the loop. So that's why the loop starts with mostly rhythmic stuff here. Just kind of a gong, those little hi-hats, kind of keeping the rhythm. It's sort of you're sort of forgetting about the previous key, so when we come in in D here, it doesn't sound too jarring next to the uh, key that we've modulated to out here. Anyway, I hope that was enjoyable for everybody. It's been a while. Guys, if you like the soundtrack, Respond Records uh, has this on vinyl. Uh, if you're interested, I think there's probably only a couple left. We did another Respond project with the Wizard 101 soundtrack, which is another soundtrack that I currently write for, and it went... It went out fast, uh, so they opened up again for some more pressings, but I don't think uh, Vex is going to do that. I mean, if you're a fan of video game music, check that stuff out because there's always some cool things coming out. Yeah, if you enjoyed this video, do all the, do all the stuff. Don't make me say it again. All right, thanks, guys. Talk to you later.